Good morning, doctor. This is my submission for lab 5. Uh, my name is Lee Siyuan. My metro number is A19EC0068. I'm from COA Session 2. So this is my submission for lab 5 and this is my answer for question 1. So uh, question 1, we need to find out the value of AL for each type of code. So I will debug step by step. Yes. Okay, first line 61, 0, 1, 12, 12, 0F, 7F, 83, B5. Okay, that's all. Okay, so this is my submission. This is my answer for question 2 part A. First, I, will initialize, I initialize the value of BL. Then, I will use test. Test is a type of N, but it's non destructive. Okay, after testing, okay. If the value, you will test that value is zero or not. If it is zero, you will jump to L1. You will jump to L1 and display a successful message. This one, jump to L1 successfully. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so this is my answer for question two part B. Okay, so question two part B, we need to find that if peaks four five six are one, then you will jump to label L1. Okay, first I initialize the value of BL with this. Uh, this value has bit 0, 4, 5, 6 being set. Then I will end the value of end a value, this one. Then I will compare, compare, compare BL to the same value again. Because this will help me to check that whether bits 4, 5, 6 are set or not. Okay, if it is, if it is set, if the value of BL is 456 is set, then the value of BL should be equal to this value. So 0 frac. So ZF should be equal to 0. So if if the ZF is equal to 0, you jump to L1 and display a successful message. This one. Okay, so yeah, successful. Okay, so this is my answer for question 2 part C. Okay, uh, okay, first, okay, for this one, I need to, the code will jump to label L2 if AL has even parity. So first, I initialize the value of AL with a value which has no even parity. Then, I purposely add the value of 1 to AL, make it become a value which has even parity. Then I will all the value. I will all the value again. So that by owing owing back itself, owing back itself, it will help us to check that whether that value of AL has even parity or not. Okay, if it has, it will jump to L2 and display successful message. Okay, so successful. Okay, this is my answer for question 2 part D. Okay, question 2 part D, we need to find out, find out that if ES is negative, it will jump to label L3. So first, I initialize the value of ES by 10, then I will subtract it by 20, so it will become negative 10. Then with this value, I will compare ES to 0. If, if ES is, you know, uh, less than 0, it means that it is negative. So here, it will jump to L3 and display a successful message again. If it is not, it will jump to exit, straight away jump to exit. Okay, so jump to L3 successfully. Okay, so this is my answer for part 2 last part. Question 2 last part, part E. So, we need to jump to label L4 if the expression, this expression is greater than 0. Okay, so I initialize the value of EBS with 5, then ECS with 4, then I will do a subtraction, EBS minus ECX, then I will compare the value of EBX, if it is bigger than, it's bigger than 0, it will jump to L4, if it's not, it will straight away exit, exit the whole function.
Okay, that's it. He jumped to L4 successfully. Okay, so this is my answer for question 3. So I have copied the code and paste it here already. And I was Okay, so I will try to find out the value of EBS first. Okay, at last the value of EBS in decimal is 1. Okay, so the question is if EBS equals to 25, what is the final value of EBS? So as you can see here, I already initialized the value of EBS become 25 and you will compare with value 20. It turns out that 25 is greater than 20. So it will jump to L1. It will jump to L1 and assign the value of 1 to register EBS. Then it will jump to up and then it will exit the program. Okay, for the second question, why is the jump up instruction need to need for this code statement? Please elaborate your answer. Okay, my answer, my explanation is like this. If you have, if we didn't have this code, this type of code, the compiler will also execute this line. It turns out that the value of EBS becomes zero. And, and, for, and for this part of code, we only want it to be executed when the value of ES is smaller than 20. Okay, that's all. Okay, so this is my answer for question 4. Question 4, we need to define three functions for all three functions have same purpose. We need to sum up the value of from 1 to n. Okay, so for the first function, we need to use loop. Okay, so for every function, for all three functions, first, I will initialize the value of EBS to 1. Then, I will initialize the value of ES to 0. ES will add as the sum and EBS is the value to be added into ES. Okay, for first function, we will use a loop. So every time the loop iterate, I will add the value of EBS into ES. Then after that, I will increment the value of EBS by 1. Then this loop will iterate until ECS is equal to 0. Sync ECS is the counter for loop. Okay, the second function initialize. After that, okay, okay, so this is our loop. Okay, for this function, I need to implement decree, decrement, and jump if not equal to. Okay, first, this loop will add the value of EBS into EAS, then it will increment the value of EBS by 1. Okay, then now it will decrease the e value of ECS by 1. Since is that is the counter for our loop then okay which means if is that is equal to zero the loop will will be acid okay so after decrement of ECS you will compare ECS to zero if it is equal to zero you will exit the loop if it's not equal to zero you will jump back to L1 and iterate the whole loop again okay last function last function we need to use decrement Z is CSZ and jump. Okay, decrement and jump don't need me to explain. Z is CSZ is that uh, the compiler will jump if the value of ECS is equal to zero. Okay, so for this function, same initialization. Then, okay, this is our loop. This is our loop. Okay, first we will add the value of EBS to ES again. Then we increment the value of EBS by one every time the loop iterate. Then we will decrease the value of ECS. Okay, then again we will compare the value of ECS with zero first. If e if e is equal to zero, it will jump to exit and terminate the function. If it is not equal to zero, it will jump back to the L1 and iterate the whole loop again. So now I will try run the program. So it succeed. Okay, let's try two. So two I should get three right. Okay, then we try another bigger number, maybe 100, yeah, same, the result is same, which means it's correct. Okay, so this time maybe 10,000. Okay, that's all, that's all of my lab 5, thank you.